how should you think about elasticity in economics? And there's going to be a classic definition here, which is percent change in the dependent variable divided by the percent change in the independent variable. And I actually think it is easiest to learn this concept when you start with non economics -y versions of these variables. So here I've got independent variable is timeouts that a parent gives their child, and dependent variable is bad words that the child says, because of course they're hoping that the timeouts will reduce the number of bad words the child says. Um, difficulty of a course, um, how does that affect study time? Like if the professor increases the difficulty of the course, um, how much more do people study in response to that? So there's independent, dependent variable pairing. And then if a campus, a college campus, increases alcohol education programs, or like required training on alcohol poisoning or whatever, how much does that reduce binge drinking on campus, if at all? So those are some non economics -y sort of examples of this. And elasticity is going to have two parts to it, where one of these is going to be direction of the variables, and that's just is there a positive or a negative relationship between the variables, which will show up in terms of a positive slope or a negative slope on a graph. And then the second piece to elasticity is the magnitude, like how responsive is the dependent variable when you change the, the independent variable. And so we might think, okay, with this one, timeouts, when you increase the number of timeouts that you give your child, you're hoping that will decrease the bad words they say. So you're hoping that it is a negative relationship between these two things if you're a parent. Now, how well does that work? Like, do, do, does the first two timeouts stop the child from ever uh, using bad words? Like, is it uh, fairly responsive? Yes, uh, kids stop using bad words. Or is this a fairly ineffective independent variable? Like, you, you do a ton of timeouts and the child still pretty much does roughly the same amount of bad words, in which case it's not very responsive. And of course, an inelastic whatever, like in a, it's not just demand, inelastic elasticity is a small elasticity. It's a situation where your dependent variable is not responding very much to the independent variable. And an elastic elasticity is the opposite. It's a very responsive uh, dependent variable. In this case, the independent variable is very effective at changing that dependent variable. And of course, you can think of elasticity even in terms of an elastic band where um, highly elastic means it's very responsive to you pulling it in one direction, whereas inelastic means it does not respond very much and um, no matter how hard you pull, it's not responding. So let's go through this list of independent variables, that's the cause, and dependent variables, that's the thing responding to the independent variable. And let's just sort of, off the top of our head, estimate what's the direction and magnitude. And we already went over the bad words and the timeouts, where increase your timeouts, you're hoping it decreases bad words. Now, if the child is really uh, cantankerous, or if they're spiteful, you may put them in a timeout and they may say a bunch of bad words in response to that, in which case you've got a positive elasticity, these things move in the, in the same direction, which would be bad in this case. And the magnitude of this elasticity, I would probably say it's fairly low. This is a fairly inelastic uh, causal pairing. Now what about price and quantity? Like if you increase the price of a product by say, 10%, the denominator here might be 10%, how many fewer of the products do people buy? And of course, there's definitely a negative relationship and hence the fact that we have a negative slope to our demand curve. But we don't know if that negative relationship is highly responsive, like you increase the price 10% and people buy 50% fewer, or if it's just a little bit responsive and not very responsive, in which case it's inelastic. So this one, it depends on what exactly the product is, it depends on the starting price and whatnot. What about difficulty of course and study time? If you increase the difficulty of your course by, say, 
will students study 10% more? Like, will they study a lot more in response to that? So these are definitely a positive relationship here between difficulty, of course, and time students spend studying. And I would say it's actually a fairly large magnitude that when I make my course more difficult, students do respond by studying a lot more. This is a highly responsive elasticity, in my opinion. Now, how does income impact quantity that somebody buys? Like, as your income rises, do you buy a whole lot more hamburgers? Well, obviously this one is going to depend on the product. Um, definitely there's going to be a positive relationship for most products for normal goods. But for inferior goods, which are goods you buy when you're low income but you stop buying later, such as ramen noodles and peanut butter and whatnot. Um, so for inferior goods, there's a negative relationship between income and quantity purchased. For normal goods, there's a positive relationship between those. And of course, the magnitude depends on what good you're talking about. And that's this one, which is associated with the income elasticity of demand. Now, income elasticity of demand is going to capture how much this demand curve shifts in or out due to income. It does not capture the shape of the curve. The shape of a demand curve is only captured by classic old elasticity of demand. Now, what about the elasticity of binge drinking with respect to alcohol education training on campus? Like if the campus requires 10% more hours of you clicking through these screens where you learn all the bad things that happen when you drink too much, how much does that decrease binge drinking on campus? So of course the hope here is that there's a negative relationship between these variables. That's the hope by the college policymakers. But it could be that this elasticity is close to zero. Like, there's basically no effect when you require students to take these online alcohol education trainings that doesn't affect student drinking behavior at all, in which case the elasticity is going to be zero, like not even positive or negative. And then similarly, if you increase the price of a marriage license from $20 to $25, or say even from $20 to $40, like that's a 100% increase, in the price of a marriage license, how much does that decrease marriages in your state? So you might think theoretically there's a negative relationship between price and quantity purchased, like number of marriages. So theoretically it follows the law of demand. But in fact, this is basically perfectly inelastic. That elasticity is zero. You increase the denominator, the price of a marriage license by 100% from 20 to 40. The number of marriages in the state, the number of people purchasing that license, does not change whatsoever. So this concept is really, really important in economics because it's how we map um, data and causal relationships that we observe in the real world onto our theoretical models. And it's how we sort of hold our models in check with reality. Like if we, if we think the elasticity is fairly strong, like there's a fairly strong response in a variable when we change the independent variable, but we go out there in the real world and measure it, and in fact there's no response whatsoever, kind of like with the alcohol education and binge drinking example, then hopefully the economists are going to update their models to account for that near zero elasticity. Now, I should say that magnitude always has to be placed into the context of the meaning of the two variables you're looking at. So if one of the variables is death rate, like um, percent increase in physicians washing their hands before surgery, you would hope that that would lower the death rate. You would hope there's a negative elasticity. And even if that elasticity is, you know, 10% increase in hand washing leads to 0.1% decrease in deaths, well, maybe 0.1% decrease in deaths is actually super meaningful. So even though the, the number on that elasticity is really small, it's like point, negative 0.01, the fact that the, the dependent is so incredibly important in people's lives means that could be a really meaningful high elasticity.
And as a health economist, I will say it's really hard to change both health behaviors and really, really hard to change death rates. So an elasticity of 0.1 for where death rates is the dependent variable is actually huge, in my opinion, if you came up with a policy that could decrease death rates by 10%, which, which I've never seen such a policy, like that would be a hard policy to enact. But the point I'm trying to make here is that magnitude has to be interpreted in terms of the economic significance or if you're talking about medical science, the clinical significance. Now, the last thing I'd like to say here is that you can have multiple links to a causal chain. So for example, um, a state might want to implement a sugar tax to reduce obesity. Like maybe they've noticed a problem with obesity. They're like, well, if we put a 20% tax on sugary beverages, say, then maybe that will decrease sugar beverage consumption and that will decrease obesity. In which case, you actually have two elasticities that are relevant. Like one is where sugar tax is the independent variable and sugar consumption is the dependent variable. And the other is sugar consumption as the independent variable and obesity as the dependent variable. And of course, how you get the ultimate elasticity, which is the elasticity of obesity with respect to the sugar tax, uh, you get that by multiplying those elasticities together. So if you have one or the other of these elasticities that is zero, the final elasticity will essentially be zero. So what might the elasticity of sugar consumption with respect to sugar tax be? Well, um, if you increase the sugar tax, maybe you'll decrease sugar consumption by a small amount. But um, decreasing sugar consumption by that amount, what is the effect on obesity? when there are so many other factors going into obesity that could be really small in the long run. Like both of these, the elasticities honestly is probably pretty small in magnitude. Whereas this elasticity is negative, uh, sugar elasticity and obesity, that's also a negative elasticity. And you're going to multiply those together to get the ultimate elasticity across the causal chain.